Okay, so I was just going to have a look at the various ways that you can hook up to a, a TNC. Um, and I'm looking at uh, how to get test data into the applications for um, development and debugging and, and seeing what's going on. Um, there's, there's not really any unit tests in the code that's written so far, so that's a, a big task that needs to be done. Um, but just being able to see the, the data going through and uh, using real world data and not seeing it crash um, is, is less scientific perhaps, but uh, also a, a useful activity. So um, I've got hooked up here. Uh, there's the FT817, uh, which is connected into the PK88, and that's attached to this uh, HamBSD machine. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to log into the PK88, and it's just been reset, so I'm going to type an asterisk, and there we go, it's configured the the board rate um, and it will now take commands from me. So we're going to want to put this into KISS mode um, to be able to use this with the uh, uh, HamBSD but uh, before I do that we'll just check that it's working and from my handheld I've got a uh, Yesu uh, VX8 here um, and I'm just going to send myself a message and we should see that come up here in the uh, uh, monitor output. If I can remember the sequence of buttons to press. Okay, there we go. Lots of things happen there, but uh, ah, okay, too many things are happening. Um, right, and now that's okay. So uh, we can see here the monitor output from the the TNC. Um, so my handheld is the DAF7 station. Um, it's sending via wide one one and wide two one. Um, MB7 UAR lives upstairs, so uh, that's uh, digipeated the packet. Um, and then, because I hadn't acknowledged, uh, it's it's then. Oh no, no, it did acknowledge. It sent the acknowledgement. That's the ACK62 there, um, and the acknowledgement got digipeted. And and just while we're going through that, the uh, the I gate has uh, given its its regular beacon. So. It looks like the TNC is hooked up correctly. Um, what we're going to do now is turn off the monitor output. Um, so KC1HHO-7 um, has just sent me a message. Uh, have a great day. Thanks for that, uh, KC1HHO-7. <laughs> That's unexpected. Um, okay, monitor off. Um, and we'll just enable KISS. Okay, and now that's enabled, I'm going to type the escape sequence till dot, exit CU. Um, and we'll attach 9600 board KISS to that interface. And actually that's not the correct sequence of things. The first thing I need to do is um, if config KISS 0 create, then attach. And then if I say if config Zero up. I can now use TCP dump on that interface, and I 
I'm going to reply to this uh, station that sent me a message. Um, let's just Okay, and there we go, and I've sent the reply, and okay, nothing was, uh, nothing's come out of the, the interface there. So I've got Wireshark there that's also capturing on the interface. coming up here. Okay, what's going on? Okay, right, it should definitely be KISS Zero. the attach can't open I type CUA0 instead of CUAU0 there's the okay oh straight away there we go reading the so I guess the um, serial port has buffered up the the bytes until they're read so there we go and we can now see in the uh, output here uh, one of these is going to be me Replying Okay. Yeah, here's me sending the message test test test. Um oh, there's another another thing there. Okay, here's the and uh, KC1HHO has replied back again. Uh, Thanks, weather looks good. 73. So uh, okay, so that's the the thing working. And and when you type it correctly, it really is just those two commands to create the network interface and then to attach the uh, Kiss line discipline to the interface. So. There is uh, the manual page, man kiss, um, that, that explains uh, you need to put it into the, the kiss mode before you attach it, create the interface, and then you do the LD attach commands. The, the board rate here is the board rate for the serial port, not the board rate of the radio interface. So I'm talking to the TNC at 9600 board, but then the radio interface is still 1200 board. Um, 
if you've got a, a TNC that's a 300 board or a 9600 board, um, it doesn't really matter as long as the serial port interface is equal to or faster than the radio interface. Um, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of... Uh, in fact, there's probably more overhead on the radio interface than on the serial interface because there's just one byte of framing um, on the, on the serial, and for for the radio interface, you've got the frame check sequence and uh, and these bits. So, okay, so that's that's um, capturing from the the local RF, uh, but the the issue here is that in Aberdeen there's really not that much going on um, so there's there's my stations um, there's a digipeter down the hill um, and there's a, a couple of mobile stations that uh, are sometimes on the air um, but to have some some real packets to test against uh, I, I, I need more more data to, to come from somewhere else so The solution to this uh, that I've, I've started looking at is the uh, WA8 LMF test uh, uh, TNC test CD. Um, so this is a, a CD where uh, this person's recorded 25 minutes of driving around. Uh, and, and just uh, taking the audio off the discriminator um, and just recorded it for, for 25 minutes. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of tracks on the CD um, and the one that I've been uh, looking at is track 1 which is uh, a recording of um, afternoon rush hour and, and the channel is, is pretty saturated for the whole recording. So then I've hooked this, uh, hooked the, the CD output up to Direwolf and used Direwolf to uh, act as a KISS TNC and then fed that into HamBSD. So I'm going to kill LD Attach. And I have this utility uh, RKISD, which is uh, for handling remote KISS, that connects to a TCP port and then presents the TCP port locally as a pseudo terminal. Um, so I'm going to turn off the, the radio just now. And we'll go to this. I need to do to set this up. Okay, so I need to run Direwolf and I need to run VLC. So Direwolf and VLC run on a, a, a different machine and then I connect to it over the network. Um, Track one. What? Okay, so here's the. Make sure it's. Okay, so this this should be all set up now. And when we look at K zero. Okay, so we're still capturing um, on that interface, but at the moment there's nothing feeding into this interface. So we run RKSD and the um, server is on 172.2.1.4.8. Okay, and now when I start playing the CD, my packet should start appearing here. Track 1. 
144.39, off the air. So, um, uh, sorry to people that were wearing headphones. Um, yeah, that's that's working. So I've I've got uh, just Direwolf is just consuming the the audio playing out of the LC, um, and then that's feeding in here. Okay, so. So I played the whole thing through um, uh, through the interface, uh, and 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 here it is in in Zastir. Um, so there, there's a a lot of stations here, um, and and it's kind of uh, interesting to see is the, the channel being this saturated is is not really a useful thing. Um, because if you need to send a message, you might be waiting a while uh, before you can send a message. There were, let's see, oh, wow. there were is that more stations than Zastu will tell me about, or there were 121 stations. It's that's not very clear in the UI. Um, And in that whole time, there were three messages sent. So most of this was was position data. Um, there were no bulletins. Um, on, only a handful of uh, uh, objects for repeaters. Um, so it's it's not the the most efficient use of the the channel, but there we go. So I, I ran the ran it through into disaster here, and um, I also ran it through uh, TCP dump. So HamBSD's TCP dump uh, can now cope with AX25 links, and the dissector is not very good. Um, I I wrote it while I was at uh, CCC in December. Um, and it will decode the the call signs. It will decode the path, and then it just gives you the hex for the rest of the bytes in the packet. Uh, so this is going to need some improvement. But having this uh, saved as a, a PCAP file, I've now got this huge cache of packets um, that I can start to develop against. So uh, I can see how how real world devices are encoding things like uh, my key data. Um, weather reports, position reports, what sort of edge cases might come up. Um, and then if I can just run all of this through um, the, the dissector and see that it's producing something useful, uh, then I, I know I'm, I'm going in the right direction. Uh, so a, another alternative to this um, would be using, oh, let's go over here. We'll be using the APRS ISD. Uh, so I don't know if I've already got that running. No, okay. So APRS ISD, and if I connect with the TLS certificate, so I've got my uh, ARRL uh, logbook of the world certificate installed here. And I'll just say, um, give me all the stations near. The I gates uh, 500 miles. And that's going to create me this AX tap. See, it, no, it's not going to be okay, right?
it works better when you actually have the permissions to to do things. Um, so that's given me this new AX Tap Zero interface, and like uh, other Tap and Ton devices, this is essentially a, a network tunnel pseudo interface. Um, so if I now run TCP dump on this, I should start seeing on the correct interface. I should start seeing. There we go. And we've got some packets coming in, and these are packets that are coming from APRSIS. Um, and this is the the dissector as it exists at the moment. Now, APRSISD um, is constructing the AX25 header. So features like uh, whether or not an operator is present and, and other things that have been added into the, the AX25 header, um, they get lost when when that's converted to TNC2 format to go into APRSIS. Uh, so to get hold of real headers, I really need to capture them off RF. Uh, I can't just use APRSIS, but for the information part, I can use this and I can get up to date and, and see what people are using at the moment. Because the, the test CD is, is uh, the, the um, copyright date on it was 2009 or something uh, is, that, is that what it said let's have a look no, doesn't actually say okay um, but I'm, I'm sure I've seen the date 2009 somewhere So I, it would be really good to get some uh, up-to-date examples of, of how these devices work, um, and, and if it's possible to get some uh, actual hardware that I can run tests with, uh, then that's even better um, to make sure that things are compatible. There's not some edge cases that I'm missing. Uh, yeah. So at the, at the moment, you'll also see there's there's things like um, when these packets come out, uh, the the header is there, but the header is a bit messed up. Um, the the way that, that this is implemented, APRSIS is just like another radio channel, and it it might be that I need to add some more logic into APRSISD that's producing um, third party headers and, and these sorts of things, so that other applications can just treat it as another radio channel. So yeah, so that's 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 about the the state of, of um, where things are on on hooking up the the interfaces and and uh, getting data moving through them. So that's um, using a, a TNC over a serial connection. In this case, it's a a USB serial adapter to connect to it. Or connecting to Direwolf, um, which could be running locally, or could be running over a network, um, and using that as a KISS interface, or using uh, APRS ISD to create a, a connection uh, to the one of the tier two APRS servers. Um, in this uh, example, I've used the Logbook of the World certificate to log in, um, but it's also supporting at the moment passcode authentication uh, for people that don't yet have a, a certificate um, and then using either Wireshark or uh, TCP dump uh, you can dissect these packets and, and take a look at uh, uh, what's going on so if you think this is a, a cool project uh, and you want to learn more about it, the, the website's here at uh, hambsd.org. Um, and if you want to support this project, um, it does cost money to run the servers, it does cost money to buy the equipment. Um, you can either sign up on uh, Patreon, um, and the Patreon link on the website as well. Uh, there's a number of tiers for recurring donations. Um, at uh, $25 a month or above, 
I'll send you some stickers in the post. Uh, we've got some cool looking stickers. And uh, if, if you don't want to make a recurring uh, uh, donation, there's always PayPal or a list of hardware uh, that would be useful to help the, the project move along. Okay, I, th I think that's uh, that's that's all for this uh, this video.